My friends, hello and welcome to GoldenEye Speed Lore. The series where we learn about the stories, the journeys, the triumphs and upsets of GoldenEye speedrunners told through the lens of the world record progression. And tonight, the penultimate episode of Season 4 of GoldenEye Speed Lore. A level we haven't talked about in a couple of years here. Indeed... We are going back to the jungle with Jungle Agent. What a remarkable level. So, Jungle Agent Mission 7. This is the last mission in the main storyline of the game. Uh, mission 7 starts jungle. It concludes uh, three or four stages later with Cradle. You get Mission 8 and 9, Aztec and Egypt after that as bonuses. But, Jungle. The beginning of the end. Obviously, you're in train. Natalia cracks the location. Uh, she hacks and finds out that Trevelyan and Xenia are headed to jungle. As such, this basically really becomes a large pursuit of Trevelyan. But Xenia is in the way. So first, we need to eliminate Xenia, which is objective B on jungle. Of course, they want to throw in a couple other interesting objectives. So objective A is destroy the drone guns. We're going to have to do that. Um, there are, I think it's six. We're going to see. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's six. Yep. And uh, no, maybe seven. Yeah, seven, actually. That's kind of a lot to hit all these shots or or throws to hit these drone guns. It's a lot. And escort Natalia to Yana Space. That's just getting to the end of the mission. So... Of course, a big, big thanks to the madman Fletcher for recording his early journeys through Goldeneye. He has this demonstration run, jungle agent, former personal best. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. So, I'm going to start out looking around. It can be very difficult to pick up weapons on this level because it, the level is very dark. It can be hard to see, especially if what you're playing it and, you know, let's say you're a kid, you don't know how to adjust the brightness on your television. This can be a challenge. So he attempted to throw a remote mine at this drone gun and he failed at first, first attempt, but he, on his second try, I guess his first try, another thing that can happen on this level is that the Z presses might lag out. You might press Z, but this, this level is so laggy that sometimes the game will eat inputs. That shouldn't be, you know, that's not unique to Goldeneye, we'll say, so it shouldn't be a surprise to hear that such a thing is possible. But it is, and it happens on this stage all the time. He's grabbed some body armor, which is nice. And, um... Xenia has already spotted him from way across the bridge. This is this is just nuts. Now they're getting a fight. Xenia has one RCP-90, one grenade launcher, which is pretty crazy loadout. But even, even the Madman Fletcher, in his earliest attempt at personal besting this level, um, was able to easily defeat Xenia on Agent. She only requires... Uh, five headshots on Agent, so... Yeah, it only requires five headshots. Very few. Um, he's taking all these all these drones. It's very slow moving up the ladder. There's a drone at the top of the ladder. It can really mess you up. More so on the harder difficulties. And then here's the last drone. Um, throws a grenade launcher. Objective A completed. Sometimes that GL shot can... Um, leg through the ground. Rarely does that happen on Agent, though. I, I uh, Yeah, it usually happens more on Secret and Double O. And, wow, look at that. That was kind of crazy. So this is the strategy and the run of the Madman Fletcher. In a time of... 2 minutes, 10 seconds. Jungle Agent. Wow. Amazing stuff. We can see the target time's 3.45. And so, this is much faster than the target time. Target time, even so, it's one of the easier target times to beat. Um, again, this is Fletcher's like first playthrough, so the fact that he, he slayed the target time so devastatingly shows that 
very, very easy at this cheat. The cheat is double hunting knives, which are interesting because you never pick up hunting knives on any level. You only get them through the cheat. So that's kind of fascinating for sure. Uh, you keep, since we don't see best new cheat available above best time, he must have beat it in like 3.30 another time. Or maybe the cartridge, the person he got it from, had beaten 3.30. So, you know, I'm just saying 3.30 is sub the target time. So, yeah, there's that. Um, a lot of people got world records early on in the early days. A lot faster than this, too. Let's take a look. There are no videos of any of these. But the documented history, to the best of our knowledge, is this. Patrick Wessels, he's still around, eh? He's still... Uh, he still streams. Pretty insane. Uh, Jungle Agent 108. Back in 98. That's insane. That's insane to think. Water, we got 102. One minute. Water and Isa, 59. Tim Grenby, 58. Was untied for one day until Isa beat it with 57. Water, Sterling has a 57 claimed and, and Grenby. Now, I will say what's interesting with this is that Aside from Sterling, these are all European players. Jungle is one of those levels that is PAL advantaged. There's no real logical reason I can put into words why that's the case. But the best sort of way I can word it is that since PAL runs in 25 frames per second and NTSC runs in 30 frames per second and the level is so laggy, there are fewer frames for PAL to be able to drop. So PAL plays more smoothly than NTSC. That's my best guess. And if you play Gold 9, you get to a decent level, like a top 100 level, and then you play PAL and NTSC Jungle, trains the same way because it's so laggy. You will notice it too. You'll notice it too. And that's not to say that NTSC players are, um, you know, making up excuses that's not the case at all. Um, at this point in time, we know we know what what levels are advantage on which which consoles and so on. Now there was this old ancient picture of Sterling's 102, which I guess was purported to be proof of his 57. Sterling actually wrote a very interesting comment about it, which I'll read here in a second. Um, and yeah, MH, MH432 uh, in chat also brings up that the rate of fire is quicker on those levels. That much is true because the frame rates are different. They, they were able to adjust like the speed. So if like you run for a minute in the NTSC and PAL, you'll get roughly the same distance. But the rate of fire had to be changed. So, like the watch laser on PAL shoots every frame. Whereas on NTSC it shoots like two out of three frames or every second frame. Something like that. And so the AR-33 as well, I believe, has the same effect on PAL and NTSC. So, um, yeah, it's the kind of kind of same things. Well, is that true? The hunting knives were removed on Japanese? That is, um, I never, I never, uh, wow, the cheat sniper rocket launcher combo? Well, that's, I mean, Flickr form up in chat, you might have seen it earlier, says that hunting knives were removed and they replaced it with sniper GL. A sniper rocket launcher that, that that does sound right now that i think of it but that's really um interesting they they you know it, it's cultural things there are these small cultural differences in these games so okay so sterling often would leave comments on speed lore and kind of give his input usually he, he would do it after speed lore and so it was like oh, a little bit too late this time he actually wrote a comment before speed lore and so um, I appreciate that Sterling, and I'll honor that by reading your comment. So he uh, referenced this picture, the 102, and he said this. Holding 57 out of 60 records at one point in the infancy of the game, I'm pretty sure Jungle Agent was one of them. He says, Patrick was well into my second year of playing Goldeneye, so it seems a bit presumptuous for him to have a better time first prior to myself who had this world record first. So I guess Sterling's claiming that he thinks he had a record before Patrick because Patrick came along, Sterling was already two years deep into playing the game, um, which I guess could make some sense if Sterling had been speedrunning it since 97, but there was no community back then. So I guess Sterling's kind of even giving us the prehistory. And he says the 102 uh, times page seems accurate, but most of the records were on the old website prior to this one, 
He says, Wes McKinney had a spreadsheet, if it still even exists. I doubt Wes McKinney's spreadsheet still exists from 1997, so... Um, but yeah, that, that's a little bit of input. And there's Sterling in chat. Yachtourage, uh, pretty cool. So um, I always enjoy having Sterling in chat uh, chime in with his, his little tidbits here and there. So yeah, that's Sterling's account of the prehistory of, of Jungle Agent. And this is where things are now, leading up to um, Isis 57 and a couple of guys uh, 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 tie tying it. No videos, unfortunately, um, in late 2000. However, in December 30th, 2000, Tim Grenby would achieve this time. Unbelievably, we actually have video footage of this time. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. And this is our first glance at what a, what a, what a, a run of jungle agent might actually look like. So let's take a look here. He's, he's throw, you can see he's thrown the mines at the drone guns, switches to AR-33 assault rifle and runs right towards Xenia and shoots her a bunch of times. Looks like he shot like 12 times there. Xenia can have very random movements. Okay, now he's um, using the grenade launcher to destroy the, the last three uh, drones. Objective A completed. Well, a late completion there. It must have been like the, the third pulse of the grenade launcher. But he made his way in. I know it's insane that this has sound. And we can't really see. But this was a 56. Yeah, it is crazy that it has sound, eh? So, since our first look, we'll, we'll, we'll take another look. You can actually pretty well see what's going on, too. So he throws a, a mine at the first drone. He's going to attempt to get a AR-33 from a guard. The AR-33 has 20 bullets, which is more than enough for Xenia. Throws the mine at the second drone and the third drone. And uh, now you see since he's in right strafe, he's not loading the Xenia encounter until he crosses the bridge. And then Xenia approaches him and he just fires away in her head and that's the way it is. Xenia won't begin the encounter until you look the direction where she's loaded. So if you stay in right strafe and don't glance over there, um, she won't come out as early as, say, she did on the Fletcher video. Let's take a look here. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful run. Uh, that actually was a really, really good run. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I'm very impressed by that run. Unfortunately for Tim Grenby... This record would only last one day, um, as an untied. Wowder would tie it the very next day. New Year's Eve 2000. I mean, geez, can you remember? Obviously, people would be more likely to remember New Year's Eve 1999 into 2000, but still New Year's Eve 2000 to 2001. Crazy times thinking back to them now. Um, what a world. It was quite a, quite a crazy world. Quite a different world back then. And uh, Wowder got jungle 56 that day carl would also get 56 in may uh 2001 and randy bukima would get it in july 01 randy is an american and so uh, he's he's one of the he's only the second now non-pal players to get the time to get a world record on on jungle so that's probably be a, a bit of a recurring theme over here and yeah i guess um warping the ladder uh, as Sterling points out, they were warping things back then. They were warping up the gap in Aztec. That was the Aztec strategy. So they knew to warp. That was obviously a big difference from, from Fletcher's run too. And it's it's one of the easiest ladders to warp because it's such a laggy level and lag helps you warp. The game's trying to figure out where you'll be in a, it, where you'll be the next time it shows you. And if some frames are dropped, there's a bigger gap of where you should be. And that's why the game thinks, oh, he'll be up up here, and that's why it warps you up. Um, so yeah, that was a very, very, very early tactic in the game's history, which is cool. In the summer of 2001, July specifically, Carl would untie the level with 55. 
This is not Carl's video. This is Wouter's video. 55. Um, this is quite nearly unwatchable. Wouter usually had really, really good video quality. I don't know what happened here. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there's, we're, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to gain anything out of this video, but we're already halfway through it, so let's just see what, I mean, it's literally going like four frames per second on an already leggy level, and, wow, this is, the lens, I mean, maybe the lens was blurred, maybe, I don't know, this is just, there's something, I, I see the word that gets used these days is elegi elegiac, like an elegy. This is giving me slightly elegiac vibes. Or maybe it's elegiac. Ele Anyhow, allegedly, this is Jungle 55 by Water. Unfortunately, we can't really see what it looks like, but Adam Moore, Australian player, we can see what it looks like. This is December... Oh, two. So this is really now a full year after it would have been a Carl Wouter time on the rankings. A Carl Wouter time and a full year. That kind of shows you, in a way, I mean, think of these other speed lures. How many people were getting records in 2000, 2001, 2002? Uh, and compared to this, I I've literally named every world record that's happened. So this really goes to show just how much less common records on jungle were at this stage in GoldenEye history. Because, again, it was PAL advantaged. Even if you could probably have gotten this time on NTSC, it still is kind of like, oh, a mental thing. Oh, I'm, I don't have PAL, it's going to be too difficult. You know? That 55 by uh, Adam Moore, very, very nice. We'll watch it once more to get a gist of it. Gets a one one passing shot on that guard, uh, eliminates him for the AR-33, and on secret and double agent, you might need to take out another guard for more ammo, but on agent, one guard is more than enough. Again, Xenia needs five headshots, so 20 bullets. Obviously, if you're going world record pace, um, five bullets will, will do the, you know, 20, 20 ammo will do the trick. Yeah, it really is, Cal, it really is. And so that's a key. The Xenia encounters are always a key. So in this particular case, he goes on the left side of this tree here. And uh, she's waiting and um, kneels and fires a grenade launcher. If she were to have fired the RCP-90 first, and that's kind of like a random, like her animations are are random beyond just RNG. They're, they're, they're random. What, what They're AI, basically, what the game is designed to do. Um... If she were to use the R R RCP-90 there, she would probably backboost you and slow you down. And so you're hoping that she shoots a green launcher and it goes by you, it doesn't hit you. Because that'll slow you down as well if you get hit and backboosted by the, by the GL. So you're hoping she shoots a GL, but it misses you, and then you can get a bunch of clean shots on her head. If she pulls with the RCP-90 backboost you two or three times, obviously it's... It's going to be slower, but I, I expect we'll see some RCP-90 Xenias throughout the night. Now, of course, we're in December 02, the early days of um, speedrunning. We're still in the early days. You know, Carl is still quite a, a talented player. Well, of course, that, that's still true. Um, but back then, uh, he would be kind of more involved, more going for it. And so Adam Moore, his countryman, ties this 55... He's the first person to get a record on jungle in a year. Carl's like, you know what? I'm going to go for it too. I'm going to try to improve my 55. And on December 4th, 2002, Carl Jobst would obtain this speed run. throwing nice throws on all the uh, all the drones almost got a boost forward there this isn't a level where you get many guard boosts that's for sure so now okay carl zipped out to the right baited her into shooting a grenade launcher f went back left 
And look at that. He looks down to boost forward and then shoots a GL at the drone. That was pretty cool, too. The warp looked a tiny bit slow, actually. Almost passed away. Shoots a grenade launcher in the... I mean, this is a pretty cheeky run. I'll say that was a, a strange sound for one frame that, that appeared as well. But yeah, some, uh, some cheeky things about this run. Certainly the Xenia... He baits her out, she's shooting, and as you see, she actually shot the RCP-90 there, but he was, a, he was out of the path that she had kind of locked in on. So he was able to zoom to the left and then get five clean. Look, he has eight bullets left in his magazine. And she's passed away there at like 12 bullets. So he only needed eight shots to eliminate her golden. And this, this look down boost is really, really good. I believe, canon canonically speaking, JD, it was a Tenacious D song that was originally in this video. And he, uh, that's what he used, but over time, the song faded away. The song passed away, it sounds like. I don't know, I'm sure someone really technologically savvy could tell me why that happens. The video file had a song in it for years, but it slowly faded away to the point where there's only this one couple frames with the song still in the background. So, yeah, really, really interesting stuff. Um... Yeah, good, great run by Carl54. Wouter would tie this a couple weeks later on Christmas Eve 2002. So that's pretty cool. So the record's 54 seconds. Again, it's a PAL preferred level. It's going to be tough for an NTSC to come along and, and uh, tie it or get a new record. And there aren't that many... Um, world record cali caliber pal players i guess that's part of it at the time so this record went untouched for almost a year it was only carl and wouter with 54. in october 2003 however that would change a gentleman would come along and get a great jungle run and i may even say that this is the defining run of this player's career this player achieved four untieds throughout his career of Goldeneye. One of them was the Aztec New Strat. Actually, two of them were on Caverns Double O. Those are also a defining, I would say. But this one as well. This one as well. Um, a player that you don't mention that much except for those contexts. But he eventually, I believe, peaked at number three on the rankings behind Boss and and Wouter. So a very, very good player. This is indeed the one and only Graham Morris. Uh, I'm not sure, I think he might have appeared occasionally in the community in the past little while. Um, but yes, his legend, his spirit lives on with this run from October 2003. A run so remarkable indeed that it must be dedicated to a Speedlore champion Jazz Apples, thank you for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. Let's take a look at Graham Morris's Jungle 53. Nice mine throw. Three hits on the AR-33 guard. Nice mine throw. Yeah, it is actually surprising that Matthias never actually got a jungle record. He was a good PAL player from that era. Maybe he just didn't like the level very much. Let's see what Graham does here. Left side of the tree. He's just shooting blindly, and it just so happens that he was able to find Xenia's head. Take her out. Um, that drone can be tricky in that sometimes it'll be like the third or fourth pulse of the grenade explosion that destroys it. And so you'll get back boosted by the drone. In Graham's case, he got it pretty pretty quick. It was like first pulse. The two self-boosts there are very, very clever, and that's probably what got him the 53. Uh, that's very impressive. I mean, the Xenia elimination was really good. It was solid. 
but it was like no better than that of Carl, you know, it was no better than Carl's. In fact, he shot 15 bullets, so more than Carl did. And, but I think the point where he won the 53, he eventually kind of got a boost off of that uh, drone shot and then self boosting towards the end here. Very clever to do that. That's kind of a more optimal technique. Like you wouldn't think that this sort of thing would be done for a few more years. But, event, but I guess Graham decided to go for it, and that's, um, that's just what he did. Jungle, Agent 53. Really great time. Remarkable time. This was actually the time on the Speed Demos Archive site. I didn't know that Ace actually submitted the time. That's kind of cool. But yeah, um, if you look at the chart here of single-level stuff, that was the time. Jungle, 53 by Graham Morris. So of iconic time, for me, this was my introduction to the community of GoldenEye, speedrunning uh, these videos. This was one of the few places where GoldenEye videos were hosted when I started first looking at things in 2005. And um, so that Graham run, I mean, it lives on forever. It's on SDA. No one's going to submit a new one, right? Imagine if someone did just to kind of troll, they submitted new records here. It'd be kind of funny. I hope they don't because um, this page is iconic. And it's how I remember the game as I first entered it. So it certainly means a lot to me too. So great, great run by Graham there. However, of course, he was a, a top three player, a great player, but the top two, you know, were these sharks encircling him, ready to strike. So of course, Woder Jansen would tie the 53 not much later, December 26, 2003. Wilder's jungle records all seem to have taken place in, like, December around Christmas or New Year's Eve. I wonder if he felt it was a chilly time of year, and thus he wanted to warm himself up by imagining himself deep in the Cuban jungle, perhaps. Nice, um throw there and well, that was a really clean Xenia. He also went to the left of the tree. I'm surprised he didn't get back boosted though because it didn't seem like she was like firing the grenade launcher. He got a boost up the kind of uh, cliff there. Self boosting off the second drone uh, shot. Um, he goes for another boost and goes in. Great run. Great run by Wouter. 53. Well, you know, you, you could argue maybe Wouter would, um, maybe Wouter would play, uh, you know, on school break around Christmas time, but that doesn't explain why, like, he, he got times, he got records other times of year as well, so, doesn't explain that. You know, Wouter was actually 1.1 at this point, Wouter was 1.1 control style, so that is impressive. His 1.2 records wouldn't come uh, along until a little bit later, so... Let's take a look again at the Xenia encounter, which... Oh, so he self-boosts with a mine after the third drone. That's a bit of an improvement. I don't think Graham did that. I might go back and check. Um, I guess Xenia shot with her left hand GL and it hit the tree and, and like, disappeared. Sometimes, um, that guard boosted water up, up the thing. He gets a back boost by that drone and then it kind of self-boosts off the next drone. So it's interesting. I wonder if we could ever get two forward boosts, two self boosts on both drones. Maybe as time goes on, we'll we'll find out. So yeah, very very interesting. Let's see if Graham did that self boost after the third. Um... Yeah, so he did. So that's becoming a standard practice now. That self boost after the third drone. Now, could we see an NTSC record on Jungle Agent? If so, who'd be the one to do it? Uh, we haven't seen any proven ones yet. Sterling and Randy have claimed them. We haven't seen a, a proven NTSC jungle record yet. But we will. It's Boss, April 9th, 2004. Let's take a look. So he... Was that a, a self-boost right off the start? The level fades in. And he self-boosts right off the start. Very interesting strategy by, by Boss here. 
chucks a, a mine at the second drone. Very nice third drone. Nice self boost. So now boss has two self boosts. Blows up that. Um, So he got two back boosts by Xenia. And a back boost on that drone. This is three back boosts. He got the four boosts with the drone there. So this is a very interesting run because there's a lot that went wrong, but a lot that went more right than other runs. He's in. It's 53 seconds. Very nice by boss. Um, I guess, you know, folks in chat, it's not just Sterling. Other folks are saying that Wouter's run, Jungle 53, was done on NTSC. I didn't know that's the case, but this kind of rolling um, end screen where the top gets on the bottom, um, that's usually an indication of NTSC. So I, I, I'm inclined to believe that's the case. I wonder what the circumstances were that led him to play a PAL advantage level on NTSC. Maybe that wasn't fully sorted out yet at that time maybe they didn't fully know so that is pretty interesting and fascinating um yeah the boss runs really good it was captured by jimbo obviously so boost off the start that's like one extra positive pretty clean uh rifle pickup so that's good and then he has a couple like positives and then a couple uh, detractions as well so throws the mine another boost this is going to be good here too now he's out of this is tricky because you actually that's actually trickier than it looks you actually have to hold Z here otherwise you've thrown your last mine the game is inclined to switch you to the detonator you can't switch back to the rifle fast enough so you have to hold Z and then detonate with A and B and then switch quickly to the assault rifle before the game automatically switches you Two back boosts by Xenia, so that's that's quite an attraction over these other runs. Two RCP90 back boosts. And, um, wow. Warps up, self boost, self boost. So he's like probably gained almost a second right there on the other guys. But the two back boosts from Xenia hurt but i would say this definitely shows i would say 52 potential i would really say so that was a really nice run by boss especially the two self mind boosts and the boost at the top of the ladder on the first drone there the second last drone the penultimate drone the rankings after boss got this this is like boss's ultimate rampage for the game he had just achieved Runway 22, Silo Untied Sweep, <sighs> Statue Untied Sweep. You know, he would untie Bunker 2 Sweep as well. Um, control Untied Sweep. Boss was the dominant player here. Slowly making his way, you know, down the game's depths, tying Jungle 53. Remember that date. April 10, 2004. October 10, 2006. The same three people have Jungle 53. That's crazy, okay? That's insane to think. You know, Boss would have recently untied this 57 as well. But... He couldn't quite nab the double agent record. Uh, 57, Wutter had 58, 58. Uh, Boss actually got that 57 the same day as his jungle agent record. I mean, that's how good the guy was, getting multiple uh, jungle records in the same day. And, uh, in a way, uh, shows the game's level of optimization that it was even possible to do that. Nowadays, if someone got both, you know, two jungle records in the same day, it'd be, like, a heroic feat. But it, not to take away, it was pretty heroic when he got it, too. Yeah, th so this shows you I mean, look, the total time in mid-April, 04, 117.25. Two and a half years later, 115.50, more than a minute and a half has been taken off the game. You know, Wouter's Aztec untied sweep is now Illuse. Uh, you know, Boss 
now has his times tied by look 40 look at these egypt times multi-tied now a train tons of time has been taken off train you know it's insane train new strategy i mean you guys know the speedler episodes you know the history um you know guys like cervone myself Ilu, we've all come along and and got into the game and helped take the game lower but for some reason two and a half years later no one would get another record on jungle agent that's kind of crazy isn't it who would be the next person to get a jungle agent world record believe it or not it was me wow it's one of my webcammed videos on a webcam that could only capture in lengths of one minute or four minutes <laughs> it was very clearly me copying Illu's logo which we will see later on you know, I would have been uh, 17 years old at the time I've mentioned before would it be a good time to go if I could go back in time it'd be you know I, I would probably do it I gotta say you, you speed lore has been good guys but if I could go back to 17 and uh with what I know now and just, you know, take over, take over the world. Basically I'd probably do it. Um, yeah, be, crazy times. Good, good times to look back upon. Let's, let's take a look at this jungle 53. I mean, look, it's the first record on jungle in over two and a half years. Gotta be dedicated to the speed Lord champion four day bender. Thank you for supporting Speedler on Patreon. Four Day Bender, enjoy this run. Yeah, I believe the heart was literally drawn in paint. Like I didn't have photo editing software, so I couldn't actually do much do much with it. Um, I didn't know I didn't know what I was doing. I clear, what seventeen year old does. I didn't know what I was doing. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, okay. I mean, that's, what. what's to say that any of us know what we're doing now, too, you know, so. Okay, here we go. Nice boost. Throwing the mine. Ah, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Nice headshots. Nice boost. So I'm using the, I'm doing the looked out boost. I don't think... Did Boss do that? I'm not sure Boss did that. A self-boost, self, I mean, this is a really clean run. Holy smokes, this is almost 52. A weird backy side boost, kind of. I don't do grenade launcher self-boost. Oh my god, that could have, that could have been, that could have been, uh, that could have been 52. That had the makings of 52, honestly. 53, wow. Wow. <sighs> Insane. What an insane run. Yeah, that was good. Actually, you know what? Let's, I want to see the boss run. I want to see if he did the look down boost in the cave. Because Carl did on 54, for sure. But... Okay, so boss does it before. Before hitting the drone. Thus, he got back boosted by the drone. Whereas I did it, and... I didn't get back boost because the drone was blowing up. You could argue it's worse because it'd be more lag you would generate, but like I, I like it better. I like that way better. Interesting. And then another key is that this remote mine, I don't think I detonated it here. Right? It doesn't blow up. I leave it on the tree. Later on, I will detonate it, completing the objective. This reduces lag at the Xenia fight. And gives you more time to switch back to the AR-33 for a more optimal Xenia fight. And that's why I don't self-boost down here. Because I have to switch to the mine and detonate the mine. You see? Objective A complete at the end. So that was that was really, really cool. That was that was epic. That I, I'm actually really like, that's one of the strategies which I sort of came up with that I look back upon more fondly because that was clever for sure that was clever a, a tns almost definitely could happen that way i don't think anyone ever has had it happen but yeah and at this point 
I'm going to the right of the trees, not that left of that tree. She's shooting it wide by me, and I'm just zipping into her head. Oh, I only fired nine shots there. I mean, this run, wow. This run almost could have been 52. It really, really, really almost could have been 52. It was a good run. Insane. Wow. And even though it's NTSC, I kind of was like, man, I could get 52 NTSC. I could get the Untied. I kind of played a little bit for it. But nothing uh, too successful. I would say it definitely had potential for 52, but it just never... Well, we'll see if it pans out. Interestingly, though, very interestingly, this is probably the first time and maybe the only time we'll ever show this player in speed lore. I don't think I've shown him before. October 06, only a couple weeks after I tied 53. Adam Matis would also tie it. He has some song in here. I'm obviously going to mute it. It looks like he had recorded this. He always wrote his records. Like, Agent, instead of being Jungle A, it was always Jungle AG. Secret Agent was SAG and Double O was Double O AG. He was, like, the only person who used that nomenclature, which is so strange. And it looks like he, he like, recorded over, like, C-SPAN or something, which is kind of interesting. Um, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I guess some people like the song. I don't know exactly what song it is, but um, there you go. People people enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. so Matus, you know, he's not been around the community for a long time, but he would go to the Virginias early on, I believe, or maybe meet up in uh, a few guys who were kind of from the uh, Ohio, the great state of Ohio. They would meet up and have uh, a few good times. Look, he boosted off the ground. Very, very, very interesting. No, it really is, Alu. It really is. It really is. And so one back boost from RCP90, but Xenia was really far behind. Xenia was kind of quite deep into the jungle there. A boost up the ramp, that's quite nice. He gets the back boost off of the drone, though, instead of the, instead of the boost forward there, which is tough. He gets one self boost there. Wow, a guard... That run is, is strange. That run is really strange. Why, is a, why did a guard spawn in his way there? That is really, really, really strange. Like, I don't even know why. Like, Jungle 53. Matabird. That's what his name is. His name was Matabird. Yeah. His old username in chat was like, Polly Amoris, and he said it came from a song. I forget what I forget what bands and whatnot he was into, but he was a good he was a good bloke. I gotta say he was a good bloke, and he um, this is probably the best record he ever got in 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 Goldeneye. I would say, you know, he was the fifth person to tie it with Morris, Wouter, Boss, and myself. Like that's pretty that's pretty decent, you know. So great great stuff from Matabird. Uh, on this jungle 53 yeah no, I was kind of thinking back to our you know we, we used to chat and you know he, he was a good dude thinking back to our nice conversations and and so on yeah okay he wasn't the only person other than you know him and I both got the time back then however so would one other player so would Ilari Pakala in November 2006. Let's take a look. Goes for the headshot, doesn't succeed. Throws the mine. Ilu is definitely playing on PAL. Throws the mine. Okay, throws the mine. Gets a boost. Nice boost. That is like beautiful. That's like the ideal Xenia. Oh my goodness. He gets a back boost from that drone. A boost up the ramp though. Gets a four boost. A four boost there. This run is this run is getting close. 
Oof. Jungle Agent 53. Wow. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. In, in Joris's notes, you know, big thanks to Joris for co-researching this episode of Speed Lore. He writes that Ilu was the first person to go for this left guard to go for ammo. I feel like we saw that somewhere else, but like, like, am I, am I imagining things? I feel like I saw that, like, boss definitely didn't do it. I didn't do it. Did, like, Wouter do it or something? I feel like I saw someone else do it. Maybe Morris did it. But, like, maybe Joris is right. I just feel like I saw a different run. Oh, you know what? I might have, it might have been, like, the, the Fletcher uh, training run is what it might have been. That's why I might have seen it earlier tonight. But, yeah, that's... Even though he didn't succeed, the strategy is... Get your ammo there. And then you could plausibly ignore this guy later on. And you might be able to take a more optimal line. You might be able to not break strafe. So... That's the idea there, so... We'll see what happens. So Ilu got jungle 53. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Ilu would go on to uh, be a very good player in the game. In fact, we can see not too much earlier than this, he actually untied jungle secret agent 56. So, Il so Ilu is maybe the defining character of this episode, in fact. Uh, and of jungle. You know, him and Ace back and forth on jungle is always kind of the storyline on jungle. So it certainly was the first go around when we did Secret and Double Agent. Well, there's a reason Ilu would become that way. And uh, let's, let's look at the beginning of this reason. This video is five minutes long. I'm just going to let it play out. A very moving and uh, interesting video. We can see there's the logo that I was obviously trying to copy off of Ilu. Um, but hey, Ilu wears it better than me, that's for sure. Yeah, I think Ilu's video is showing this amazing 52. We'll watch We'll watch the 52 again because, I mean, it's, it's the untied. And then he kind of goes on to show, oh, we have this other run that was really, really good. Slapping the guard on the left, that is like uh, a flash of brilliance. 
I would say, right? This is this is brilliance. There's this he. So in order to really understand how Elu came up with that, it's like Elu joined the community in 2003, I think it was. Might have been 04, but I think three. And he was the DLTK guy. He was the first guy to beat Facility on Dark License to Kill. That's having all the 007 setting stats maxed out. And he would eventually go on to beat every single level. I think by this point he had beaten not quite every single level, but almost every single level. I think there was like two he hadn't beat at this point. He had beat almost all levels, which is very, very impressive to do so. And he had to come up with very unique strategies to do it. And there weren't that many people around, so there weren't that many people to, like, bounce ideas off of. The hive mind wasn't as strong, you know? Nowadays, it's kind of more easy to come up with this amazing community effort to this insane thing because there's so many people focusing their energy on accomplishing something. But back then, there wasn't. It was, like, you versus the world. And so Lou had to come up with all sorts of crazy strategies. One of the biggest problems with Dark License to Kill is that you get 10 bullets out of ammo from each kill, but guards take 10 headshots to pass away. So by default, you're playing like a, a losing game. You're going to end up using more shots than you're going to get in return. It takes 10 shots to kill a guard, you get 10 back. You have to come up with alternatives. So using explosives is a really good tactic. Luring guards into a room and like blowing up a box, brilliant. But sometimes you just have to get get down and dirty and just slap a guard to death. And on DLTK, when their health is a thousand healths, it takes something like 80 slaps. Like no joke, it, if they have body armor, even more. So yes, okay, it, it takes away 10, it takes less than 10 with the AR-33, that's correct, Flicker, for sure. Takes, like, six or seven. But, like, still, if you miss shots, you're, you're, you're in a losing game. And the AR-33 fires in bursts. So, nine bursts, you need them to be perfect headshots. Otherwise, it's either each, bursts of three. Three, six, nine, twelve shots. So, six shots might do it, but maybe not nine more likely. If one misses, you're going to go to twelve, you're, gonna, you're back in the losing game. So sometimes you always have to slap, always have to slap the, the guard. And Illu noticed a strange phenomenon on jungle where instead of taking 80 slaps, the guards took one slap. This, I don't know if it's ever been fully, fully explained or understood. What is known is that if a guard isn't looking at you and you slap him from behind, you can kill him in one slap. That's known. We talked about this on the last episode, Bunker 2 Agent, in a lot of detail. I don't know why it also works on DLTK. Sometimes. And jungles where it worked. So Alu had this idea of, oh, if I slap guards, like maybe I can slap this guard to death and get his ammo quickly while strafing past him. And it worked out. And um, that was a very, very intelligent strategy. Yeah, in February 06, this video is so old, it's called Illu Jungle DLTK 2031 Part 1, because back then, you couldn't upload videos longer than 10 minutes, and it later got changed to 15, and obviously now it's, it's you know, now is the current era. But you can see Illu slapping this guard, and he's realized that the guards on jungle, for some reason, are more prone to passing away from slaps than they are on other levels. And this is just a weird quirk of jungle. And as a result, he's been able to take this practice and go on to use it on Agent successfully for an Untied, which is incredible. I think this, this level, he actually lures Xenia. I mean, this would make a whole other lore to itself. Maybe one day I'll do DLT. Who knows? DLTK lore. Maybe. I believe on this run, he runs, to, he gets rid of everybody slowly, runs to Xenia, and then runs back to the beginning of the level and lets Natalia and Xenia duel it out. Because Xenia has a ton of body armor, and as a result, um, 
she doesn't pass away very e easily, so he lets he lets Natalia um, have have her way with Senya, and it actually turns out to be beneficial because, I mean, Natalia also has a ton of health. So, yeah, like, admittedly, I don't know enough about about the DLTK stuff. It looks like Flicker has the record. Uh, currently on Jungle DLTK, 7 minutes, 16 seconds. So that kind of goes to show just how difficult it is to, to play Jungle DLTK, one of the harder levels to beat. So, yeah, amazing run by Alu. Obviously, it worked out. He had the idea to get this guard's ammo, brought in the slap over there, and the rest is history. Another a beautiful run played out for Jungle 52. And, um, yeah, very. I don't want to say I was necessarily bummed. I was getting a lot of records at the time, but, like, obviously I just got the record on, on Jungle, and I kind of felt like I could have got 52. Like, I saw 52 as potential for me, so Lou beat me to it, and that's that's a simple truth. Unbelievably, Lou and I, I have never had a tied time. There's never been an IPRW or RWRP time in the rankings. It's never happened. Even though we were contemporaries in 2006-07 both getting on tides. It's kind of it's kind of crazy to think, eh, that we've never had in the Lou Goose time, but it's true. Chung 52 could have been one of them. You have the slow roll screen and, and there's that, so yeah. All right, so this would remain untied for, you know what, a, a, a few months, we'll say. A few months. But, of course, nothing can hold grips against, uh, well, I mean, even before getting to that, or at the end of 06, Ilu almost has the untied sweep. Almost. But he could not get the untied sweep. He could not get Jungle 00 57 untied. So he couldn't quite get the untied sweep. Would he ever be able to? Would you know? Well, I guess I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. But by this point, Ace has come on to the community. Ace is obviously a very good Goldeneye player, to put it lightly. Uh, I mean, look, the legend Ace showing his face for the first time in in a in a defining Speedler episode. Uh, this has got to be dedicated to to someone. It's dedicated to our Speedlore champion, Riley P. Thank you for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. Let's take a look. So he threw that mine from way further away. Way further away. Gets a boost. A guard almost sidestepped, jumped into his way, but made it that was he kind of detonated that mine early so he kind of got like a sidey back boost there which wasn't great so ace is going left of the tree I, I think Ilu and all of us the past few runs have gone to the right of the tree there but ace went to the left of the tree it worked out for him we'll probably get into some like strange Xenia runs like maybe obviously Xenia doesn't go that perfect every time ace got both boosts off the drones there pretty nice run i would say jungle agent 52 tied world record so ace is choosing to detonate early here which is interesting i was like where did he detonate later but yeah he detonated there went to the left of the tree really 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 good run yeah this was this was very i agree sterling this was a really clean run Like, t getting four boosts there is um, it's pretty good. You know what? I wouldn't say you've missed most of it. Uh, I would say we're probably about a third to done, so there's still plenty left. No worries there. Beautiful run by Perfect Ace. And let's see. Yeah, he makes use of slapping that first guard as, as well, so. Okay. Now, well, there's another, there's another great player... Who hasn't reared his head quite yet? It's Dave Clemens. In October 07, Clemens would get 
this speedrun. Nice uh, detonation there. Gets the slap. We're going to see something a little bit new and unique on this run too, okay? So keep your eyes peeled. He detonates early. That's interesting. One back boost from Xenia. Oh, oh my god. And she knelt down, but he compensated. That's pretty clutch. Like, that's clutch is the only, only word you can say. Warps up the ladder. Gets the back boost. That's not good. Doesn't get a four boost. Oh my god, dude. This almost... Wow. Four boost there. Warps the elevator door. Obviously, you've watched enough speed lore. You know that some cracks in the game are warpable, like the depot roller warp and so on. It just so happens that the last door of jungle, both sides of it are warpable. And, I mean, that's, yeah, that's pretty nice. This is the first time we've seen a door warp in, uh, in this episode, so that's pretty cool. If we go back to my second 53, I'll have to mute it here. It was a really, really nice run. I would say if I knew to warp the door at this point, this would have been 52. I get hung up kind of like a, like, you know, it's like, hmm, right? This one might even have been more so. Like warping it is clearly a faster technique. That one, I got... I would say, like, yeah, man, like, maybe not 52, but there was time to be saved there, you know? And so Clemens goes in and puts that to use and gets 52. Yeah, his Xenia was, like, really weird, right? Because he gets a back boost, and then she kneels, and he barely looks down in time to get that last headshot on her and pass her away. So, yeah, very interesting run by Clem. 52, October... Oh, 07. October 07. And uh, Clem is obviously not caring at all about any disadvantage on NTSC. He's going for it. As would this next gentleman. You know, at this point, it, it, it's, it's a tale as old as time now. Boss is there. He's trying to hold his head above water. He's thinking, well, if, if Ace and now Clem both got Jungle Agent 52, I better go get it myself. And that is indeed what Boss did. Yeah, this is another Jimbo capture. Early 08, I think this was captured, maybe. Or maybe, yeah, maybe mid 08, I want to say. Yeah, saturated Jimbo cap. I mean, hey, Jimbo had some of the better captures. I mean, look, how many runs wouldn't exist if not for Jimbo's uh, capture card back in the day? Pretty impressive. Two back boosts from Xenia. Another one from the drone. Warps the ladder. Gets kind of a side booster, which is decent, and no boost there. You know, the hitboxes, uh, with all the leg, the hitboxes of all the boosts and whatnot can be a little bit wacky so you have three like three clear back boosts and still 52 right that's pretty significant i would say based on what we've seen especially this boss 52 and the clem 52 it seems like 51's possible right it seems like you're kind of thinking you would need a perfect xenia you would need probably really, really, really nice or perfect grenade launcher boost at the last two drones. And um, a perfect warp ending. And 52 might be possible. 51 might be possible, rather. Might be out there. Well. On December 10th, 2007... Our dear friend Ilu would be back at it. I take this one as scare warning. It's not going to keep you up all night and freak you out, okay? 
Um, but if you're if you're drifting off to sleep, I'll give you a second to just focus here. V historic speedrun, dedicate to our speedlore champion, Doctor Slochter. Thank you for supporting speedlore on Patreon, Doctor Slochter. I hope you and everyone else enjoys this legendary, legendary run. I think this clip is where that clip is from. It's one of the Lou's most used clips in his world records. Illu freaking out at the end stream like a madman, and I don't blame him. Clean boost there, no damage taken. No detonation there. No back boosts, nine shots, super clean. Boost. No back boost there. Boost. 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 Insane warp. Is this the run? Jungle Agent 51. Yeah, I think it's Echo the Dolphin. That was, that was sick. That was an insane run. <laughs> okay, then he did a similar homage to his previous uh, 52, where he showed his control run afterwards. Yeah, insane, insane video. Um, insane run. Like, jeez. You can imagine, imagine seeing this. It's 2007. There's, like, no YouTube videos refined back then. And it lose putting out stuff like this with insane world records in speed games. It's like, this is art. Like, this is actual art. Not made for financial gain. Not made for fame. It This was art, you know? Illu was never expecting that tens of thousands of people would see this and be inspired by it. But that's what happened. It, it, he's an artist. I, I truly believe that speedrunning is art. And everything to go with it is art. The videos, the hoarding, the history telling... Yeah, speedrunning. I mean, I think anyone would watch this run by Alu and agree that speedrunning is is art. A perfect a perfect speedrun. And so in December 2007, on the strength of Jungle 51, Ilu finally completed that untied sweep. That 54 obviously we discussed it in depth, in detail in the secret agent episode that run is one of the greatest runs of all time he got that november 25 2007 and he had to 51 two weeks later so on the strength of that 54 he was like i better go an untie agent because um this is my chance this is my destiny and he went and got that untied sweep amazing amazing stuff from Ilu. A truly remarkable speedrun and a truly remarkable speedrunner who will live on forever in legend of Goldeneye and speedrunning. So at that point in late December 07, yeah, Lou had the jungle untied sweep and he was on his third Aztec untied sweep. Those Aztec episodes are unbelievable. Um... <laughs> Yeah, go watch those Aztec episodes. Insanity. Ilu was a master. He was he, like I think it's very clear that Ilu, uh, deeply inspired 
my work when it comes to the games. You know, the way I present my runs and, and um, if it weren't for stories like Illuse, I probably wouldn't wouldn't be doing what I do now, you know? Like, the way he shared his life through playing the game, like, it, it's so unique, you know? It's not something people would ever imagine would, would be possible through video gaming, I don't think, at the time. You know, if if Goldeneye Spearing back then was just this kind of boring characters and boring figures just posting times mindlessly, what it, cool would it be to tell these old stories, right? But it's characters like Illu that make, make this kind of thing special, of course. And characters like Perfect Ace, who relentlessly, with no regard for sanctity or uniqueness or meaningfulness of a record will chase down whatever because he simply because he can and so in june 2008 perfect ace got this speed run throws the mine R interesting boost spot there a very interesting boost spot throws the mine okay Throws the mine. Nice boost. Lands on the tree. He, now, he, 12 shots fire, but it was about 9 when Xenia passed away. No back boost there. That was really cleanly done. Up the ladder. Boost. Boost. We're going to get one more. Boost. Warp. Yep. Ace just nailed it. That's simple. Ace just nailed it. And that put an end to the untied sweep of Illu. Actually, the end, did it come earlier? Or was that the first end? Um, that was the first end. Ace would go on to match or beat you lose other untides, and that would sort of uh, really spark the rivalry between Ace and Elu, and we'll continue to see that play out tonight. I think we will, so. Of course, Clemens is just as good as Ace at this point. You know, Clemens is, I mean, still, Clemens is pretty damn good, so. A week later, he would get this time. slap I kind of like the hum in the background I know kind of, some people get kind of annoyed by that but it's always very aesthetic to me things are really blowing up here <laughs> well timed a lot of people whoa he's going for two boosts that is very interesting I thought it was kind of an experimental strategy I don't think we'll see that again Gets one RCP-90 back boost. Forward boost. Hits the drone. Another one? Not quite. Almost like he could have got that one up the up the kind of... That kind of looked back boosty. And no forward boost. Wow. This run could be much better. Wow. That was... Clem's opting for the right side warp as opposed to the left side. Illuminates to the left side. But Clem's original 52 also to the right side. So Clem, I guess, prefers that right side warp. And hey, hard to say it doesn't work out for him, you know? Because it certainly did. Certainly did. Yeah, that run looked much less clean than Ace is in a lose. And I don't really have any explanation for it. Like, Clem is just very, very good. And so really, really good players can often make times look not as good. Because they're gaining time everywhere. They're gaining like, you know, one thousandth of a second. <laughs> Obviously you can't gain a thousandth. But you know what I mean? They're gaining like very small time everywhere. And it adds up. So I can't even see anything that like Clem is doing particular faster. I guess like you could say this second mind boost here on the ground. Saves maybe 0.2 extra. But yeah. The, like, that point two doesn't seem enough to offset the Xenia back boost plus 
the not optimal boost up here plus the missed boost here i guess on second look the boost up after the ladder wasn't as bad as i thought but like well you know what now that i rewatch it, it was a pretty good run right but there are a couple of sore things that stick out like the missed final drone boost and the Xenia back boost Clem was so good at jungle, he would... This is kind of more of a demonstration. It's very interesting. Clem would get three jungle 52s out of four runs, which is pretty insane. Let's take a look at this. You, in, in fact, this is so crazy. It's such a crazy exhibition of skill that we're going to dedicate to our speed lord champion, Sammy Limex... Thanks a ton, Sammy, for your support on Patreon. Let's take a look at this insane Clemens show of skill on Jungle Agent. Chucks the mine. I'm wondering if these are 52s. If we'll see... Yeah, look at that terrible side backwards. Like, we, like they might look awful. And now keep in mind, 52 would have been a record, you know, within the year. And uh, only, like, Boss would have it at this point, because Ace, Clem, and Illu would all have improved. <laughs> beautiful Xenia. Beautiful, beautiful Xenia. A back boost there. Pff. Warp. Up the ladder. Back boost. No forward boost. Right, these are like, this is not an optimal run. And uh, warps the door, though. That's quite nice. Gets a jungle 52. We see his best time is 51. He he must have been going for jungle 50. I mean, it, it makes sense because those sort of sore thumbs, um, he would have noticed them too. He would have been the first to notice them. So it makes sense that he was going for jungle 50, hoping to get the perfect run. Yeah, it's crazy. And most of the time, the Xenias are not that clean. Like, you'll get back posted three times, you'll miss your headshots. And not only that, but like... Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh, that was insane. Back boost there, though. You have to hit the mine throws on all the, all the drones. Like, there are dozens, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of runs. Oh my god, he missed the warp! Is this still 52? Oh my god, dude, he almost do 51. He completely blew it! Are you kidding me? There's so many runs where people missed all the mine throws. But not Clemens. Clemens, obviously, well, there were for Clemens too, but not in this particular video. Let's see what this is. Unbelievable. Um, slaps the... Oh, he, oh, he missed. Oh, he missed. See, that's a typical jungle session for you. You're going to miss. You're going to make mistakes. Most people, uh, this happens a lot. You know, you miss your slap. You miss a mind throw. You miss the Xenia. You miss time your boosts and your grenade launcher shots. You know, so this stuff happens. He gets a four boost there. Throws the mine. Chucks the mine, detonates. Very nice. Mine on tree. Very nice. Okay. Two back boosts. Oh my. One back boost. Or that was a four boost, rather, so that's good. We got two back... Oh, that boost really kind of threw him off. Oh, booster there. Oh my god. This one's crazy now. Oh my god, four boost! Something... Oh my, oh my, that, dude, that almost looked like 51. I'm kind of surprised that was 52. 
that looked like that looked like it had potential for 51. That was a really good run. Huh. In any matter, obviously Clemens was extremely skilled at the game. Caking 52s. Caking it. Um, yeah, exactly. It takes a lot of skill to react to getting hit when you're not expecting it. And, wow. Now, there's a bit of an interesting story with Jungle 52 and Clemens. He was getting so many 52s so easily. He actually sent this VHS tape off to Alex Base Boost Anderson to capture at some point. Which he did, gladly. And they thought it'd be a funny prank if Clem got a 52 on a file where the PB was 52, not 51. And Alex will just claim it as his own PB. And these guys did this. They pulled this off. And people kind of maybe suspected it. Like Alex, I think he had 54 before, 55. So he wasn't a known jungle star. People kind of thought, oh, you know, that looks kind of like Clemens' play. Is that really Alex playing? And like eventually after like one day, they came clean on it. He was like, yeah, yeah, I claimed Alex is 52. It wasn't me. But it's sort of a form of lying or cheating. It was kind of, it was a funny kind of joke. But like, where does that kind of thing land in terms of splicing, in terms of lying about a time and not providing proof, back when that was kind of more of a thing? Um, you know, where, where do you rate that on the score of moral grayness? You present someone else's run as your own. So that's kind of an interesting little tidbit. I mean, you can see how easily Clemens could cake these 52s, and that's largely why um, he was able to, to donate the runs to Alex Anderson. Yeah, Alex's PB was actually 55 before before that so it was kind of more like hmm like are we sure are we sure of this alex uh, alex actually has 52 now nowadays so that's interesting but yeah back then 52 was a lot better yeah yadney i mean there's some people like i i see what's crazy is that if this was done today they probably would be permanently banned right even though it's a very minor thing and it's kind of like what's right or wrong it's 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 very it, it can always be very difficult to know oh don't cheat simple to say right what's cheating is a joke cheating you know it's kind of like very difficult to to know which which way you know is having a bit of harmless fun cheating and bannable Well, this record would only be matched by Ace and Clemens, Throat 08, Throat 09, and his 2010. But alas, who would come along in the year 2010, the year of one and only Mark Rutsu, a very skilled GoldenEye player, and a player from the PAL region prime for some jungle action. Mark Rutsu would play and get this speedrun, a speedrun and video so remarkable that we're going to dedicate to our speedlord champion, I hope he's still here, I just saw him in chat moments ago, Mr. Moxie. Thanks for supporting speedlord on Patreon, Mr. Moxie. This video isn't Rutsu Vision. But I have no idea, it was uploaded in 2010, I have no idea how it ended up like this.
you can see the sort of lighter gray is like the U2 player. I have... Well, it was clearly captured on video. I don't think the... I don't think this... I don't think this video was always like this. I think it got distorted in time. But who knows? <laughs> oh man, he almost passes away. Beautiful warp. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Mark didn't know about, about back switching, so we're gonna we're gonna watch the run again, with that in mind. Okay. Luckily, and yeah, th look, this run was uploaded in January 2010 on the Mark Rutsu channel. Tied Road Record and Set done on PAL. How did it end up like this? Maybe we'll never know. Someone was able to repair the footage. So we'll watch it again. Repaired. Let's take a look. Oh, no slap. No slap. Okay, so Mark would have pressed A twice. So he... he okay, so boost there, which is nice. Throws the mine and... Destroys the drone. Yeah, up here it's going to be troublesome because instead of pressing A and Z to back switch, he's going to press A three times for the assault rifle? Oh my god. That's insane. I agree the original version is, is better. But, you know. Ooh, that was a that was a well-placed GL shot. I like that. But if you... if you The hitbox of that drone is, is weird. If you shoot it too much on the right side, it doesn't blow up, even though it looks like it should still. He could have got a boost there if he had health. He didn't. Um, that who knows? Who knows if that could have been fifty? Maybe the run was the run was solid though. The run was very solid. Good run by Mark Marcus Striker. He would eventually go by the alias Marcus Striker. So we kind of we kind of have fun with that a little bit. And uh, Mark is is going to slow roll us again. Okay, Mark, we got a fifty-one. Great. <laughs> Another European PAL player would join in on the fun. Not right away. A few months later in September 2010. This is, of course, the, the morally ambiguous Henning Blom. I always like to dedicate Henning's runs because there's such an interesting story. An anomaly. Uh, this run is going to be dedicated to our Speedlore champion, Madrai Bread. Thank you very kindly for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. Let's take a look. And this is almost certainly a Henning run. There would have been no practical way to fake this run with the techniques that Henning had been using at the time. So I believe this run to be fully legitimate. Henning was a good player after all, and that is very, very oh, 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 Henning, Henning passed away, Henning passed away. I guess yeah, that makes sense. He passed away. That ground boost was a little bit. I've not seen anything like that before, so I wasn't expecting that to be honest. I really wasn't expecting it. Nice slap. Nice throw. Okay. I wonder if Henning will do any kind of tricks with the mines on this run. Because he kind of seems like he's he wants to. Yeah, that look down that look down mine was very interesting. I guess on the previous run he lost too much health from it. So he just ended the run. But that, that worked out nicely. That's a unique I always like to see like a unique strategy. Very, very clean Xenia. Nice, um, nice boost. No second boost, though. 
Probably gets one here. Yep, one. Two, even. And warps on the right side. Wow. That was a pretty cool and unique run. I'm very impressed by that run by Henning. And, you know, as always, I, 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 I mentioned in, in the Spieler episodes, you know, it's been... Uh, it's been seven years, eight years since the splices were discovered. Is it time to unban Henning? Um, who knows? You know, it seems like as time goes on, more and more people are getting banned from speedrunning rankings. Um, for what's, I mean, look, back in Henning's day, he had numerous fake runs on the rankings for years, denied them at first, then, then admitted it, uh, we gave everyone an opportunity to come clean with any runs for like two or three months. No one did, and then more of his runs were caught. And even at that point in 2013, there was still the like it seemed like the majority of people didn't want Henning to be banned, which is which is kind of remarkable, right? Um, most people were no, no, don't, don't do it, don't do it. Have mercy, have forgiveness. And now in the world, we see people get banned on speedrun rankings for what seems to be like very minor transgressions it, it's really crazy to see how things have changed in seven years people are getting banned left right and center on various leaderboards throughout the spearing community um for you know, perhaps much more minor offenses than uh, henning did the most egregious thing you could do in speedrunning i would personally say and there was still most uh, huge support to not ban him and it's interesting to see how times have changed over the past seven eight years it makes me wonder, you know, it's like, is there ever a time where speedrunning and social media and maybe the world needs like this great atonement? You know, like maybe every 10 or 12 years, we should just say, all is forgiven and hit the reset button and everyone is unbanned. You know, maybe that'd be interesting. Um, you know, there should always be hope for people to do better and and redeem themselves and, and, and show that they've learned their lessons. I think so. Um, yeah. I think, especially back then, um, seven years, like, I, I think there really should be, you know, a f first strike... Maybe a six six month or one year ban, second strike maybe a three year ban, you know third strike maybe a permanent ban. But maybe that permanent ban every ten or twelve years should be the great atonement, you know. And we you know, do we want to live in a world where everyone is exiled for their mistakes forever with no chance of redemption? I don't know if I want to live in that world. It, it, it is kind of interesting how in like the criminal system, there is that opportunity. Obviously the most egregious crimes, you can get a life sentence, no parole, that kind of thing, but aside from that, many crimes, you know, you will have another chance once your time is served. You've done, you know, you, you, you've you served your penance. But in the worlds of online gaming and of social media, that opportunity doesn't come. You know, no one gets unbanned from Twitter or Twitch or so on and so forth, you know? So it's kind of a frightening world that we're entering, I would say. Anyhow, enough about that. Henning's run was in late 2010. Even by late 2012, no one else had joined the party at 51. We can see Ace is 53, untied on uh, Secret Agent, and 55 tied with him and Mark on Double O Agent. Very good runs. No one has the... No one else has joined. Kind of crazy thing that two more years have passed. They were some of the more quiet years in the community. But, um... Yeah, two more years have passed and, and nothing. Nothing. What would change? Well, in 2012, we would enter the Twitch era. The game has been rejuvenated. I, I do actually wonder, it is interesting too, if Twitch didn't come along, would people still be playing Gold Knight? Like, 
Maybe honestly not. Like, really. I doubt it. Um, but Twitch, it's the renaissance. It's the renaissance, and great things come from a renaissance. One great thing came on the day of December 21st, 2012, when Perfect Ace played Jungle Agent and got this amazing speedrun. A speedrun so amazing that it can only be dedicated to our speedlore champion, Corey Meyer. What a legend. Wow, let's take a look at this amazing run by Perfect Ace. Some will remember. December 21st, 2012 was the day that the 2012 phenomenon suggested that the Mayan calendar was going to end and thus an apocalypse would begin. And it's, it is really interesting because... You know, we'll, we'll get we'll get into that a little bit. Let's watch the run. We'll get in, we got time to get into that kind of stuff later on. Super clean run so far. He saves that uh, detonation for later. Eight shots and Xenia passed away. Looks down boost. No back boost there. Super clean. Detonates. Warps. Gets a, the cleanest forward boosts we've seen all night long. One boost, two boost. This is the run. Perfect warp. This is the run. That's the run. Jungle Agent 50. Wow. That's the run. That's the run. Yep, beautiful. Yeah, and, and JD, like JD pointed out, the start was, um, you know, perfect. Perfect and, you know, not beyond perfect. Uh, but the ending... <laughs> The ending was absolutely stunning. Did he miss that slap, though? Yeah, so he missed that slap, but then he got that guy in full strafe. Full strafe. So it was as if he didn't lose any time. Yeah, that was... This is this is the run. But it's, it's interesting that we bring up that, that Mayan prophecy date, December 21, 2012, because obviously the world didn't end, but others who interpreted the ages on the mind calendar predicted we would enter simply a new age and like i just mentioned about the henning and the banning and how things have changed in the past eight years it is curious i think a lot of people agree like the world in 2012 was so much different than it is today way more different than you would ever expect in eight years and as a result like maybe the mayans were right right like maybe the calendar has a meaning maybe these you know, I don't want to get too deep into the uh, tinfoil theories, but like maybe these cosmic powers, which are beyond our understanding and control for now, actually do have meaning, and we are in a new, completely different age than we were pre-2012. Maybe. Maybe. In any manner, Ace would go on, untie Double Agent 54, he already had 53 untied from 08, one of his greatest runs ever. One of the greatest runs in Golden Knight history. And as a result, Ace would achieve the untied sweep. Unbelievable. Illu once had the untied sweep. Now Perfect Ace has the untied sweep. It looks like Mark has a train untied sweep, and that's it. This was a crazy... I mean, man, this, this was... Looking back now, this was like the golden era. Beautiful, beautiful era of GoldenEye speedrunning. Okay, so... What would happen next? Would anyone manage to tie the record in 2013? No. No, they wouldn't. They would not. How about 2014? Well, let's just look at the beginning frame of this video and see. This is an Illu video. The Mayans predicted the world would end on December 21st, 2012. Maybe for many people that prediction was false, but not for me. When Ace got Jungle Agent 50, I lost my last world record on Jungle on December 21st, 2012. I was for many years, as far back as in 2006, the king of the jungle. 
the jungle master. Now, I didn't even have a tied world record on the level anymore. So I hit the road. I'm going to watch this 11 and a half minute video as Illu intended. I'll edit it out, whatever needs to be edited out later. So let's enjoy and take a look. The Mayans predicted that the world would end on December 21st, 2012. Maybe for many people that prediction was false, but not for me. When Ace got Jungle Agent 50, I lost my last world record on Jungle on December 21st, 2012. I was for many years, as far back as in 2006, the king of the jungle, the jungle master. Now, I didn't even have a tied world record on the level anymore. So, I hit the road. The last world record is in captivity. The jungle is at peace. I think I'm losing focus a bit. I need another beer. Be right back. Yeah.
Yeah, it's good. I, I actually, I must say, I like the one in the can more, though. This is slightly more bitter, I think. Hello, Nick. Cheers. The beer strats. Beer power, guys. Beer power. Cheers. I mean, that run wasn't even good. I'm, I'm definitely going for like 49. It's like 10 minutes and boom. That's the power of Guinness beer. Cheers. Yeah, next time I'll have three Guinness and it's a 49. That's my signature move. But now I was like, ah, crap run, boom. And I was like, ah, oh, it was 50, whatever. <laughs> and we have a capper in the audience, of course, as you can all see. Capper, wave. Oh, capper can't hear me. Capper, wave, please. Hello there. Thank you. Okay, this is Illulu, and I'm gonna try to do 50 push-ups. I got Jungle Agent 50 yesterday, and I'm gonna try to do uh, 50 push-ups. Hopefully, I'm gonna succeed for the vid.
think that was 50. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I'm going to fail this. <sighs> 50 push-ups by me, Ilu, for jungle agent, 50. World record. Peace. I was half expecting his screaming at the TV footage at the end there. Oh man. It's like the thought that was going through my head watching that was like sometimes I wonder if what I'm doing in taking these stories about speedrunners especially from back in the early 2000s when like I said it was a different era. There was different expectations, different normals in society. Sometimes I wonder if telling these stories, if I'm doing a disservice to the guys who are in the stories, right? The, to, by some effect, you got to let bygones be bygones and move on, you know? But I watched this video by Alu and it's like, no, this is, this is right. This is, this is, this is what I should be doing because stories and people like that of Illu deserve to be brought to light and shared with the world. I truly believe that. I truly, like, that's the world I want to live in. One where people like Illu are celebrated and admired for just being who they are, you know. That's just simply epic. There's nothing, there's nothing more to say. Uh, it's easy to see why I personally have been so inspired by a guy like Yalu. What's cool about that 50, especially, is that if we now skip ahead here to when he got that 50, so let's say late September 2014, we're going to see that on Jungle... There's now the Ace Illu sweep. This sort of rare two person sweep where you know two people have the record on each difficulty. 50, 50, 53, 54. So that's pretty cool. I'm not sure of any other time when that's been the case. Definitely there's a lot of you know classic DCRI time sort of history. Um, but to have a sweep of all three stages that way, I'm not sure that's ever happened. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool moment. So that's that. And to be honest, that's the end of the Illu and Ace saga on Jungle. We did the, the first episode, the rumble of, uh, in the jungle. And um, that was about Illu and Ace. And this episode certainly is about that Illu and Ace rivalry as, as well. But now the rest of the episode, that's it for them. Uh, so great stuff. A big, I would say, round of applause for them. But now we got to get moving and uh, watch, watch other people's uh, turn in the spotlight. The next person to tie Jungle 50 was Luke Sklar's May 31st, 2016. This is a run he would hoard in the Kapap 2 horde project and reveal it and it was a run that would help him become the gold knight champion if only for a very brief moment in time perfectly clean run to the start a nice extra boost there a very small bump on something you know at some point but that's not really a big deal That was like she was passed away by the 7th AR-33 shot. That might have been the best Xenia we've seen all night. Warp up the stairs, up the ladder. A bit of a back boost on that, on that drone at the top of the stairs, I would say. Looked like it to me. Two selfs, though. Like, other than that unideal ladder drone, that run was like as perfect as it gets, I would say. Let's see. 
So the fifth, so he hit four of five. That fourteenth shot is what what did her in. So he hit six, six out of the first five. Unbelievable. Yeah, a bit of a, bit of a back miss there, but other than that, the roll was absolutely perfect. So, great run by Luke. Again, May 2016. If we watch Grease Pig's amazing championship progression, we'll see that in May 2016. Well, uh, 2016 had a lot of back and forth. March, Clemens took champion again. Ace, Ty, Ace, Clem, Mark. Mark, Clem. Mark. Ace, Ty, Luke. Luke for 19 days, 21 days. So this May uh, 31st Jungle 50 run was part of uh, what helped Luke get to number one overall, if only for a brief period of time then. He would later return as champion in 2018, but yeah, so that was uh, an important run for, for Luke, for sure. Now, here we go. The next person to tie Jungle 50 would not be that much later. A month, two months later, in fact. The one and only Mark Rutsu. Yeah, there was a question about Ace, the flag of Ace, Ace there on the rankings. Uh, he's he's used both flags of England, uh, of UK and Pakistan, and that's not uncommon. A lot of uh, athletes will kind of bounce between countries. Um, maybe ones where they were born, other ones where they hold nationality. Uh, there's a lot of like international. The governing bodies can be like have drama. Uh, people can change, you know, it's very common for people to change. Like an, like an example is um, Martina Natralova in tennis. She changed from the Czech, Czechoslovakia actually, to USA. So this is very common actually for people to um, switch the nationality they choose to represent in competitive matters. Jungle Agent 50 by Rutsu. Um, I mean, look, at this point, there's there's not much notable. We're just getting very similar runs. Uh, we're just going to kind of blow through some of these. Well, this one's actually kind of interesting. This this one is, is Wotus's Jungle Agent 50. And the interesting thing here is that he was the first person to use the 2.x control style on Jungle. Uh, Wotus is a new age player. He started playing like 2013. So he's going to watch the cutscene and begin the level at full speed. This means he has to switch straights with two controllers, which is somewhat difficult, I would say. Throws the mind. There's just switch strafe. But he's so good at playing with 2.x that it's it looks no different than him playing with 1.2, which is really amazing. To be that good with two controllers. Looks like the audio is a bit desynced. That boost, by the sound of it, would have been like not a perfect four boost, but look good. One back boost by Xenia. So that's where the 2.x is going to come in handy because um, getting 50 with a back boost seems pretty wishful. But because he saved 0.3 seconds at the start, that helped out. And yeah, you can see how to back boost up at the top as well. The latter, same thing as, nice as Luke. That might be it. I don't think so, though. I got it. I got 50. That's right. I got it. I got it. Easy, easy as pie. Wasn't quite as iconic as his line on facility agent, which I got it, Cook. That was iconic. Um, but hey, we had a great run by Wotus, the first one to get uh, get 50 with 2.x control cells. That's pretty significant. This was in June 2017, so you know the time's kind of ticking by here. 
And in fact, the next Jungle 50 wouldn't happen for another year in August 2018. And this is by a gentleman, Oscar P. We haven't really talked about Oscar much in these speed lords. He is also watching the cutscene, so maybe he's using 2.x as well. It does kind of look like it. Throws the mine. Switches straight. Nice boost. Nice boost. Wow, some insane headshots. A back boost. Why no look down? That's a good question, Manitou. Two really nice boosts and probably nice warp. Yeah, really nice warp. And this will be a 50 by Oscar P. Yeah, it, it's kind of an interesting, like, convention where there, there are some levels where we simply have decided over the years not to look down because it didn't seem like it helped. Egypt, statue, jungle. And we just never looked down. Now, interestingly, like, Kali's recent statue records kind of show that, oh, maybe looking down on statue is actually useful. Yes, look down feels terrible on jungle. It feels like it doesn't help, but, like, maybe it does. That's, like, it's a good point, right? It's kind of one of those, like, old remnants that maybe hasn't been corrected yet. Like, maybe, maybe, it, maybe it does help, and we just, we haven't crossed that bridge yet, funnily. But, like JD says, maybe it's laggy no matter what, and thus there's, there's simply no benefit to it if we look at the rankings of september 1 2018 we see these six gentlemen with jungle agent 50 um that's a lot of people with 50 like things are you know that's for a good record that's kind of starting to rack up some ties and well this will take us to the final part of tonight's golden eye speed lore episode Well, indeed, we're in October 2018, and we can see something notable that, well, will come up now. Obviously, KJ, Damn 52 Insane, Bunker 116, Archives 15, Egypt 44, Carl is on a war path through the game. He's really trying to build his name from upon which he can build a, a large following online and well he proved to be very successful at doing that for a reason jungle agent actually became some of his like defining streams obviously he doesn't stream much anymore you know he's got a lot going on got a a, a young a young child and uh, you know success on youtube doesn't really stream much anymore but these jungle streams were some of his like defining streams Let's take a look at what he got in October 2018. Let's see if we can see something kind of interesting. He's had 50... He's had 350 fails and his PB is 51. Let's take a look. You should go for a walk and maybe smoke. True that. Yeah, but you're not just walking, are you? You're listening to something. It's just pure walk. Unfiltered walk. Pretty good. I don't think it's 50. Yes! Yes! You champion! <sighs> yeah.
Yes. Fucking nailed it. Nailed it. <sighs> Thank you. Oh. What a hero. Yeah. Very happy right now. Very, very happy. Doesn't look good. 50 looks good. Yeah, so what is interesting and notable on this run is, like, Carl would approach every level that he was playing with a new idea. He would always try to find some optimization. And on this level, what he did is he stayed in right strafe, and so he would look up and throw the mine, and it would land at the second drone. This way, he didn't have to change strafe. Twice. Usually, he would change to left strafe and then back to right. That's two strafe changes. You know, conventionally, through time, we've sort of uh, guessed a strafe change is about equal to a boost. So that's like almost two boosts that he's getting, you know, time equivalent save from that throw. And yeah, it's a bit awkward. He might lose, like, so let's say two boosts, let's say 0.6 of a save. Maybe he loses, like, 0.1 compared to having a more optimal line, but, like, he's still gaining time. And so that was, and it doesn't even look like the line is different at all. Like, so, really, really clever innovation and strategy that he came up with. Um, and that led to him getting 50, and it led to a lot of people going for 50. Um, we are, again, just going to blow through these next few runs. Um, it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be insane. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> yeah, but the uh, unideal uh, top of the ladder situation um, you know, kind of gets back boosted by the drone as he's blowing it up, but, like, all things considered, really good run, really clever <laughs> strategy, so... Amazing stuff by Carl. Um, Carl and Clemens were kind of in a heated rivalry at the time. So two days later, we would see Dave Clemens go on to get this speed run. Let's, let's take a look. I think he does a slight alteration, a slight take on Carl's technique. And Carl was playing PAL. This is NTSC Japanese by Clem, so... Yeah, so see, Clem, instead of looking all the way up, he just does a quick turn and throw, and that really does not lose much time. You see a lot of those in the tool assisted speedrun. They really don't lose much time at all, so... Pretty cool. Throws up, hits the tree, very nice. One back boost there. Wow. I didn't know that comment got removed, JD. That's, you know, again, this is something that... Back in the pre-2010s, saying I used 1.2 like a man, this would be considered not... This would be kind of a kind jocking on each other, you know? This would be kind of a, considered very lighthearted. But now that this... I mean, again, it's... The Mayans were right. We're in a new age. And so... You know, Clem's saying that he used 1.2 like a man, and thus you're less manly if you use 2.x. Uh, I mean, hey, these comments, I guess, get removed from the rankings now, so... Uh, it is what it is, I suppose, but... What's definitely true is that, hey, Clem got that 50 there, and he had that new, um... That, that interesting mind throw at the second drone. And, uh, hey, that's a nice, clever innovation, so... Uh, big props to Clemens for sorting that out. Right, um... Okay, here's the first drone. He'll get... Yeah. And believe me, this would not be the end of the their beautiful second throw. This would not be the end of the jungle world records. Two weeks later, Dan Swisso Parker. Dan Swisso Parker would join the fun. Is he he must be using 1.2? I don't I don't see Swiss as being a 2.x guy, but Perhaps I'm incorrect. There's not really always an easy way to like tell what someone's using. He cut the cinemas. He must be. He must be. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with one point one point two. But I could be wrong. So he's using that Clemens style throw. Beautiful Xenia. At this point, like, look, the runs are becoming 
pretty well sorted out. It is what it is. A back boost to the top drone, though, so that could have been a little better. Boost. Boost. Warp the door. Beautiful run. Beautiful run by Swiss. Aside from that one back boost, it makes you think, you know, with this new right strafe second drone, is 40 possible? Irie here is going to explain how to play jungle with 2.x, so this is something that comes up. Let's just watch this three and a half minute video, and if I gotta trim some, I'll do it. Let's take a look. Guys, we're gonna do a quick uh, on stream jungle tut for my new strategy. Um, so here's how you do it go into the 2.2 control style menu, because you probably don't have, you know, like input display on the screen. With your GameCube analog stick, align it down left. Hold the L, R, press start, and go up right. So now the neutral position of the stick, like I'm not touching it at all, not moving it, not using a rubber band or anything. And it's going up right, so it's like basically strafing me, doing a right strafe. And go into the wall, build speed, make sure that you're at full speed. You'll know you're at full speed uh, when you see like this ball bobble right here like he's going blah 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 so I like stop myself see so it's like starts up doo, 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 doo. Yeah. and now <clears throat> the last step is to make sure like I'm on depot right now because it's just a helpful start the last step is to hold left on the stick because this is what you're gonna have to do for Xenia and actually make sure that bond is moving straight forward and not any bit left or anything like that. All right, it looks good to me. I had a problem yesterday where it was really hard to kill Zenny and then I realized that it was because my thing was actually kind of sending me a little bit left. So yeah, so just align this and make sure that you're at full speed and then go into jungle. Takes a while to load up. Skip the first cinema. You don't have to touch this controller at all right now. I'm holding just one controller. Let's pretend I didn't make a massive stack and then start. Restarted. And now you can really focus on getting that throw down. Cause we're going all right straight, baby. So at this point in time, normally you would like boost off the tree too. But yeah, so at this point in time, you can pick up your con your other controller, hold left, and just charge down Zenia. I mean, you're gonna have to learn how to do that anyways. Like on 1.2 or whatever, you just like hold C up at her. You have to do that anyways, so this is just gonna like force you to do it. It's also gonna force you to, to, to you know, be optimal with the all right straight start. Thanks, Melhead. They're talking about a uh, Zoop World Record, by the way. Yeah, I'm about to put this on YouTube. Yes, yeah, so I'm holding one controller to start. Because that just makes life really, really easy. I come here. I line up this tree, and then I just do a turn while I press Z. It's like kind of a whip. We have the trees on like the right of the screen. And we're here. Right? And at this point in time, I, I just picked up the other controller. But I don't have to touch the stick right now until here. Now I'm holding left on the stick, which is making me go forward. And then just let go again. And you could even just like go back to uh, holding one controller again. Like that's probably what I'm going to be doing. So, yeah. I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. And cheers. And it would help for many people. So basically what he's doing is he's just um, has the controller, the second controller, cruised in a certain position so that it's strafing upright. And all he has to do is hold left and then it'll, it'll strafe only moving straight forward. And that makes it very easy. Instead of having to 
play with two controllers that feel like you're trying to grab two eels which have just jumped out of the ocean, um, all you have to do in the second controller is hold left at Xenia. That's all you have to do, and then you let go. So that makes things a lot easier. I would do similar things on like Depot, for example, when I was going for my records there. So clever stuff by Irie, and hey, it would it would help. It would help. Let's let's see what he would get shortly thereafter. Shortly thereafter. You'll notice um this run was done. This run was done on Halloween. Dude, Mike, this isn't like a conversation yet. It was done on Halloween. And thus Irie is dressed as Boris. Which is pretty cool. Like, if this and this and this and this happen, they may not even be able to see that you're using such a thing, so... Nice boost. It's probably hard to please anyways, but if you were to ask the person who's in charge, they'd probably just say no adapters, converters. Back boost? Nice, nice elimination, though. Wow, nice, okay, around the corner. Warp, boost, boost. Boost, boost. <gasps> yes, dude, yes, dude, I f***ing love you, Mike. I f***ing love you, Mike. I f***ing love you, dude. That's f***ing right, dude. That's f***ing right, dude. Ivory got Jungle 50. Pretty amazing stuff. Uh, way to go. Really, really nice time. Obviously, he's uh, mastered this technique that he described in the previous video. And there you go. Yeah, look, that one looks super duper clean. One back boost at Xenia was probably the only sort of flaw in the run. And I would say, I mean, think of this now, right? 50. Ace and Alu got it. With the two strafe changes that we don't do anymore, that's 0.6. And with 1.x instead of 2.x, that's in our 0.3. That's almost a full second time saved. So you got to think that if someone can pull off a perfect run with um, 2.x and the new strat, 49 is on the table. This run, however, was uh, done a month later. I love the VHS effect. It's amazing. By... Hayden King, Hados. This would be hoarded in the Kapap 4. Erroneously, sometimes colloquially called Kapap 4. Officially called K4. Which would be uh, revealed in... Well, I forget what time of year it was revealed, but... Everyone had a good time. I think it might have been revealed like a, a full year after this, actually, come to think of it. This was done in November 2018, but I think Kapap 4 was like almost a full year later. And Hados got Egypt untied, but then kind of disappeared, and he was hoarding, and some people thought he was in on the hoard. And he got a few good times like this in the hoard, but... People were kind of. I, I thought there was a non zero chance that Hados was going to become the champion after the Unhorde. And that didn't quite pan out. He had maybe a half dozen new records in there. So he might have just, you know, uh, lost interest or not played as much as maybe I thought he was going to. But uh, yeah, Jungle Agent 50, really good time. I didn't know that, JD Black. Uh, I mean, tell me more. Why is the 53 not ranked? I have no idea. I've not heard of such things. Okay, in January 2019, well, for one, Joris Cuvedo, who's also a very, very good player, 
uh, would join the join the party with fifty jungle agent fifty. He's wow, that was interesting. He's using two point X to shoot Xenia. Or shoot Natalia rather, and then he's going going hard. Yeah, it's interesting how I, 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 that's crazy, JD. That's crazy. I guess Hados just kind of lost interest in the in the game and in the community. You know, if he's not po if he has times he's not even posting. It's wild. Wow, Joris got a boost through the drone. That was really, really, really nice. One boost. Is he going for a second? Go. That was. That would have been so scary to go for. Joris, jungle, agent, fifty seconds. Now, what's interesting with with um, this Joris fifty is that at this point, Carl had been going for forty nine jungle agent which would be a very good time clemens and carl i, I mentioned a few times they uh, certainly you know they've had a hot and cold relationship over the years but the last few years certainly have been more cold they, they they haven't been getting along in that time and so clem was also dabbling going for jungle 49 i guess clem wanted to kind of maybe troll a bit and so Clem posted on the rankings, on the rankings, he updated his times page to say jungle 49. He claimed he had got 49 untied. He claimed he'd used a new Xenia strategy. It seemed off. It seemed strange. Even I was kind of sus of the time at first. I was like, did he? Don't, mm? Seems weird. Why wouldn't he post a video? New Xenia mind strat, which is kind of... A mind strat for Xenia? It doesn't seem like it'd be faster. This is the kind of strategy where we would have thought it might work in like 2006, but like as time goes on, you know there's no way a mind strat for Xenia is going to be faster because we already eliminate her so quickly. It was strange. Joris had this 50 and he wasn't sure if it was the world record because Clemens' 49 was on the rankings. Of course, Clemens' run would eventually be removed as he would never prove the 49 and so Joris's 50 would go down as the world record when he had achieved it if we look at the rankings as january 7 2019 we can see 12 people have jungle 50 that is a lot of people that's a lot of people and we can see the carl clemens rivalry heating up they both have one of the untied on jungle pretty insane Let's take a look at some attempts to get 49 over the years. A few people went for 49. This is Illu. And let's see who would eventually succeed. Yeah, I think for a while it was just like we allowed 48 hours for an untied because if someone like Luke or myself wanted to make an epic video but post it beforehand, we were given the time to do so. Um, but yeah, nowadays you just have to post the video right away. This was not 2.x. This was this was back in 2014. Illu was even dabbling in jungle 49 even way back then two boosts oh my god two boosts up. that's insane <gasps> back boost missed oh ah holy shit, there was a godlike run until the ending I've never seen that before. That was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Stunning. Carl would go for 49. Let's take a look.
Oh! That was nuts! Oh, that was insane! Back boost. Miss the boost. Oh! That was a really funny bloody uh, uh, DVD. What's up, man? That was a really funny uh, Zenya kill. A casual 50. Uh, Carl racked up ton. I don't even have time to show to show all these runs. Like, Joris posted probably 20 runs. 20 Twitch clips of Carl going for 49. Um, you know what? Let's watch, actually. You know what? Let's watch one of the one of his 49 fails. Let's see. Actually, I only need to get rid of one. And that's the there. Just, just to prove that he so has the speed for it. Plus. Throws the mine. The widow's well. I only need two. Throws the mine with the right strafe. He's using the Clem variation. And yeah, in that last run, he had an extra grenade launcher boost and mine boost. So it's like, can we incorporate these? Xenia goes down. Perfect. He's getting really good at that now. Boost. Gets the drone. Detonate. Warp. <gasps> Objective A didn't complete. Failed run. He, he missed one of the drone throws. 49 failed. Wow. And yeah, it is interesting to illustrate that because... That's something that, like, would have been happening hundreds of times to every player who played this level over the years. Like, that mine might have fallen short. Um, this throw might have missed. Might have been too far left. So, yeah, it's it's like, that one, that, that mine, that mine was it. That mine looked low and left. So, yeah, something that we've missed tonight seeing only completed runs is that many, many, many... Uh, times you will miss a drone and that's completely normal to miss a drone and every single run you've seen people probably had 20 or 50 runs of that pace where they missed drones and that's part of playing jungle so I'm glad we actually got to show that one Clemens going from for 49 let's see nice slap Clemens definitely would have been using one point no Clemens actually I think he did learn how to use 2.x. Believe it or not, that second throw was not good. That second throw probably missed. Throws it. Detonates. Throw. Insane headshot. Failed 49. Uh, clearly 49's possible, guys. Clearly 49's possible. Here's... A little weird there, but I think I still recovered it. Irie going for it. With his San Jose Sharks hat. Oh, I see that little... I just barely caught the stack. Not a perfect warp either. 50. Duped with a stuck and a warp. Um, a not a, you know, not perfect warp. So, look, there's a lot of guys in contention for the jungle agent 49. Who would succeed? Who would be the one to finally nail it? It would be none other than Carl Jobst. In January 2019. Are any of you guys watching AGDQ? Uh, 
I mean, this run's perfect. Like, it really is. <gasps> oh, okay. Ah, I'm gonna blow it. I don't know if it was 49 ever. What? Yes! 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 <laughs> what? Yes! Yes! Oh god, dude! Oh! He got it. He's pretty happy. That was, that was just a beautiful run. I mean, there's nothing else to say. We'll watch it once more. 2.x control style. Starts in full speed. Gets the perfect slap. Beautiful throws. Oh yeah, because we were gonna go for uh when he was going for damn fifty-two, he made a thing that was gonna be damn Sember. He's gonna play every day. He hadn't he played it for a long time in the earlier part of the year. And then it took a big break, and then he was gonna go damn Sember, and he got on day two. And this is jungle January. He got on day eleven, so not doing so bad. Yeah, this is just the this is the run where all the pieces have now come together. That's all that's all there is to it. All the pieces have come together. Warp. Boost boost. Beautiful. A tiny maybe stuck there. Like it, it, it looks like a stuck, it might not even have been. It might be like an illusion stuck. The illusion stuck. So amazing, amazing run by Carl Jobst. And interestingly, he actually had the opportunity to get the untied sweep. And I, th I thought, I, I made a whole video about it. I thought like, wow, he's going to get the untied sweep. And, um, you know, it's pretty remarkable. If we look at July, uh, if we look at January from 2019. Wow, hardly all think how things change, right? It was like, oh, wow, if he got jungle 0052... He could get the untied sweep, but he never ended up getting it. He never even really played for it that much, which is kind of interesting. But again, you know, it's it's hard to uh, find error in any of his methods in the time since. Um, but yeah, really, obviously, insane stuff. Almost had the untied sweep, but not quite. And alas, the record would not last forever. Clemens obviously isn't a natural 2.x control style player. But he would come up with a technique called toe point x. Toe point x. As Irie described, there isn't much to do on the second controller except for hold left at Xenia. Clemens thought, hmm. I don't want to hold this awkward second controller. What if I leave it on the ground, and when I get to Xenia, I'll use my foot and hit left on the stick, and then let go. Clemens somehow mastered this technique, which honestly is not... Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of surprising, but it's not like... It, it, I mean, I do similar things with 2.x. You know, we're, we're the more old school guys. You know, we, we, we're not cut out for holding two controllers like eels that just jumped out of the ocean. So his second controller is on the ground. He's in right strafe. And right about now, he hits, he hits left on it. Strafes at Xenia. Oh, 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 that was like six shots in a row. That was unbelievable. 1.2 would have been really, really, really hard to get to get it. Boost, boost. Oh my goodness. Boost, boost. Warp.
He's a beast. Clemens is a beast. And so Carl's Untied would only last three months, less than three months. Clemens would match it. And um, an iconic moment in the Clem Carl rivalry, I would say. Um, so, yeah, a really, really epic. Clem's good. Clem is really, really, really good. Yeah, and Japanese. I mean, PAL is still advantage. Carl used 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 PAL, so amazing stuff by Clemens. However, he wouldn't be the only one to join the fun. Believe it or not, the Madman Irie Butler. Again, another master of these uh, two point X techniques on the jungle. He would go for it. Let's see what Irie Butler would do. That's a good point too, uh, Sterling. Clemens missed that first guard's ammo. He had to shoot a guard. Very, I mean, geez. It's hard to imagine that... Already we're seeing 49s that have bits and pieces that maybe could be improved, right? Carl had this micro stuck. Clemens missed a guard. That's got to be at least a couple tenths of a second. Um, to get the to get the ammo from an, another guard, so. Oh, nice! That's a clever boost point, clever boost location. Chucks the mine. Chucks the mine. Irie's using ammo off screen. Oh, there he just puts down the controller. Ammo off screen is believed by some to reduce lag. This is widely unproven. This this is considered pseudoscience at this point. Boost, boost, insane. Boost, <gasps> boost. Oh my god, it's unbelievable. Yes, yes. <laughs> It was quite a pop-off. It wasn't quite his Dizzy Dingies pop-off where I thought he was legitimately going to pass away. But that was a pretty... Irie's pop-offs are pretty insane. Like, he just is just, like, shocked. Like, he's like, whoa! He did it. That's right, guys. We fing did it. What the fuck, man? I didn't think I was gonna get this record. And then I knew I was gonna get this record. And I went for it. Oh my god. Sweat Drangle. Oh, shout out to Clemens. He definitely helped with this one. And everyone else for the support. Oh my god. I'm just so happy I clutched that warp. It was so hard. <laughs> it was the hardest warp to clutch. But I did it, dude. It was so hard, dude. So clashing. Thanks. So, does he go grats on your 32 on uh, Streets Turbo? It seems kind of fun. The insane record by Irie. Yeah, I mean, let's take a look at this ending. Irie's saying craziest ending. Boost up the ramp. That's not that common. Nice boost. Nice boost. No hangups or stucks there, which is really, really nice. One boost. Two boost. This warp is super hard to clutch, and to get it, like, without bumping into the wall at all is really insane. Really, really, really nice run. And, uh, honestly, like, you know, I'll admit, like, you, you know, Irie's been a player his whole career. You know, what is it... 
one untied, two untieds, the um, the Cradle SA for sure. You know, Irie is a grinder, right? Irie plays a lot, grinds a lot. It's easy to 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 say to to be the hater and say, oh, well, he plays so much. Of course, he you know he's, he rises the ranks. He's going to fill his times page, get decent times. And you know, sometimes you think like. Is is he that good? Is he that? Is he a top ten player, Irie? And for a long time, I admit, I kind of doubted. I was kind of like, you know what? He just he got there through hard work, which is respectable, but the raw skill. Um, so he's always oh, is, is it there? But this run, when Irie got this run, and Irie got a couple other jungle runs as well, that's why I was like, you know what? Like I gotta admit, Irie's actually a pretty damn good gold knight player. Like there's no more questions to be honest. Like. Irie's good. Irie's earned. I, I would say he earned my respect as a as a as a top golden eye player uh, with his jungle world records, and he would go on and get uh, secret and double o agent records as well, and then he would cap it off with his forty nine. So, um, uh, you know, that's that's the truth. Irie's good player, and this run sort of um, demonstrates that better than any other. I mean, Irie even before the run began said. I think this is my best run in Goldeneye, so there it is. Very, very nice run. This one's called Hitting the White Ted Jungle Throw. I don't know what this is about. I'm just curious to see. So ammo off, off screen again. So that throw, I don't know if that was the throw. Oh, I guess it was. A really, really quick Row. Hmm. I guess it's sort of like a. It doesn't even look. Honestly, it doesn't look that much faster. I wouldn't say it's necessarily going for go, worth going for, but um, I mean, if Ted thinks it's an optimization of you know a couple frames, maybe it is. So, I guess that's notable. This one says "Mastermind Guard" by Joris. This is just kind of a fun clip. So the guard, <laughs> he missed the slap on the first guard because the guard sneezed. So, yeah. Okay. Very funny. Yeah, but it's definitely a good, a good uh, throw. It, uh, it doesn't look much faster. I guess he's on the left of the tree line. Okay, I see. I see the slight difference. Um... Might that be a piece for 48? Maybe, maybe not. However, in the month of March 2020, Joris Cuvedo would join the trio, Irie, Clemens, and Carl, with 49. Let's take a look. The guard didn't sneeze. Yeah, that's why sneeze runs are insane. It's true. It's true, uh, Ilu. It's true. Back boost, but very, very clean. Boost. Boost. Hit up the ramp. Beautiful. Warp. Boost. Boost. Oh my goodness, this run is insane. Boost, boost. Oh my god. This run is insane. It is. I got a bad boost. <laughs> what the f***? What the f***? Did you get it? Yes! Oh, what? what? <laughs> no. <laughs> what the f***? Oh, f I think I broke my lamp. Oh, my lamp. <laughs> what the f***? Holy oh, shit, that scared the f*** out of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Holy f***. Oh, Hell my yeah, god. man. Oh, I got, like, I was at Xenia, 
and she had like a, a real low lag animation when she only shot with the RCP. Mm -hmm. And but she back boosted me once, but I got a perfect Xenia, and the ending was like, the ending was like, perfect. Oh my God, I'm not recording in the good um... audio. Oh no, never mind. No, I think I might have dropped frames. I hope I. Oh my God. Oh mon dieu, un record incroyable par Joris Quevedo. Yeah, great run. A beautiful run. It says he writes that it was originally hoarded for K5. Is that an abandoned hoard project? Not uh, not sure. On the 1st of the month of April this year, the Rixer, who I think was in that chat with Joris, so only a couple days after Joris got that time, the Rixer, who's more of a perfect dark player, would post this record. She said, Jungle Agent 49, new Xenia mine strategy. This seems to echo what Clemens claimed a couple years before, a uh, you know, one and a half years before this. Well, there was meant to be a K5, but they decided against it. That's insane. I believe it. I believe it for sure. Okay, let's see what this is. Ah, I see, JD. Yeah, I mean... Interesting. Okay, this looks to be a troll. This looks to have been an April Fool's Day prank. It's sort of a tradition in the community to post fake times in the rankings on April 1. Um, I don't really think it's funny anymore, to be honest. I'm laughing now, right? But, like, it was, you know, I don't want to be like an old boomer. Like, oh, it was funny when we did it in 2006. It's not funny anymore. I mean, look, if some people are having harmless fun with it, then uh, then why not? Okay, he quit out at 49 seconds, so obviously the Rixer did not get this record. In fact, I'll actually show this. This is the way it stands now. Carl, Clemens, Irie, and Joris got 49. We can see now a hand... Oh, I didn't get the show, you know... Yane, Pitkinen, Carl, Gus, Riolo, they got 50, pretty good times. Our pal Woody is 51. Um, you know, a lot of other nice times that, you know, we could go on forever, but I think we ought to call it here pretty much. Joris would go on to untie Secret Double Agent. 51 Secret Agent and 52 Double are. I mean, these times are incomprehensibly insane. I think when we did Jungle Spiller last... 54, double load, 53 essay were the records. So, like, there's a lot of an addendum left to be done um, on that stage. Insane to see over there. But as for now, Joris has the sweep on the stage, but not an untied sweep. Joris wrote about 48 agents in the research post. He said, if you watch JD's comparison video, we'll get to that in a second. You would assume Clemens' 49, 49 start is slower because he misses his slap on the first guard and then has to kill another one with the PP7. So we can't do the first mind boost. Agreed. We thought that. Jory says, but it's not slower. He's just as fast. So what if Clemens just skipped the first guard and took a more direct mind to the first throw and then did a headshot on the other AR-33 guard like he did in his run? What if he took the same path as the old 53s at the start? Would this be enough for 48? Knowing that 49 has been done with a back boost, I think if we study this potential faster way of doing the start, we might be able to see a 48 happen maybe someday soon. And so that's a pretty uh, pretty good idea, right? That's a pretty... It sounds like 48 might be possible. Let's watch the comparison video, and that's that's the stream. I wish he tur I wish he didn't I wish he muted the track that had music and left a non-music track, but that's life. So let's see, they're all this they're all like dead even. Uh, Carl's actually is slightly behind, I would say. Joris seems to be the more more ahead. Joris still only got a back boost though, so it makes sense. They look all even at that point. Joris' Xenia came up the latest, so... Huh. Yeah. 
again, they're not perfect because the frame rates and so on might differ, the encoding might differ. Then Carl is slower to the ladder. You really gotta watch he's at slow speed. Oh my god! Oh, so Irie was, was the fastest real time. 48.6. That's really, really fascinating. And all the guys pop off. And hey, that's the glory of speedrunning. That excitement, that rush, that feeling. Few things come close. They really do. It's like when I think back in life of things that give you that rush. Very, very few things. Um are like like a world record in speedrunning so this video and all the videos you watch tonight will be linked in the description of the youtube upload along with all these other clips of uh clem and carl going for 49 joris dug up ton of these so if you want to dive in even more than you already have uh, that's where to start so yeah pretty amazing stuff and like i said that is where she stands today four guys with 49 Joris could get the untied sweep if he gets 48, and it may be technically possible, which is pretty amazing. I guess I should say at the end, they're like, yeah, it looks like the real time was 48, but um, the real time game time conversions are, are not always perfect, and the game is interpreting once at a time. We're timing it with like after the video's been encoded and run through a video processor, it's, it's a whole... I have a video about why we still use in-game time, and it's a whole other bag of worms to open, but I just figured at least some people will probably ask about that, so I should mention it. But indeed, my friends, that's the story of Jungle Agent and all the remarkable world record set and stories that lay within. This one was kind of a winding tale. You got, we, we got really a good span of the runners in this one the early stages as you'd expect with water and boss and even before them and then you know even i got in there a little bit then we had the illu and ace wonderful rivalry and uh, then the new rivalries today so what will happen next only time will tell as always there's only one more episode left this year believe it or not at the end of november then, of course, in December, we're going to be doing the uh, Untied World Record Year in Review recaps, as is tradition. I think this year we'll probably do two. We'll probably split up Goldmine Perfect Dark, because there's a lot to get to. Um, and, of course, next year, we'll get right back to Season 5, uh, with likely the epic conclusion of GoldenEye Speedlore, believe it or not. So, a huge thanks to these Speedlore legends for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. I truly appreciate it, your support. I mean, it really makes this possible, so thank you for that. It, it makes me look forward to doing this each month for you for you all. So, And thanks to everyone else. The chatters, the lurkers, the viewers, the other supporters on Patreon, and everyone who helped make this journey possible. Like I said, back next month with another episode. So until then, stay true, my friends. And I'll see you in the next stream or video. Good night. <laughs>